in 1935. A malaria epidemic had killed 80,000 lives during a seven-month period. It was the British colonial administration who took steps to control the gravity of this situation and further considered on a volunteer organization for a long-term response for this and similar situations, which was ultimately resulted in the formation of Ceylon Red Cross Society. Individuals such as Dr. Burcliffe, Director of Medical and Sanitary Services, Lady W.M. Stubbs, wife of Governor Sir Edward Stubbs and the first honorary president, Mrs. R.S. Spittle, the first honorary secretary, and Sir Oliver Gunathilaka, the first honorary treasurer, in July 1936, with direction of the colonial office, this society was attached to the British Red Cross Society and named as the Ceylon Central Council branch of the British Red Cross Society, as Ceylon was a British colony and there was no right to use the Red Cross emblem otherwise. In 1943, a large sum of money was sent to Bengal in assistance of the people affected by famine. These noble causes brought all and every leaders in Ceylon, irrespective of other challenges, to re-establish Sri Lanka as a sovereign state. In the early era, Mrs. Sirimawo Bandar Naika, the world's first woman prime minister, was the first honorary secretary of Colombo District Committee. Sri Lanka Red Cross Society was born on the shoulders of noble volunteers. With volunteer involvement, a hospital supply association was formed. System of first aid post was organized. Colombo Division of Volunteers worked at the General Hospital during a strike of hospital attendants. After gaining independence, the Ceylon Central Council branch of British Red Cross Society was dissolved on 31st March 1949. The very next day, on 1st April 1949, the Ceylon Red Cross Society was formed. On 27th of November 1951, by a royal decree of His Majesty King George VI of England, the Ceylon Red Cross Society was incorporated into the Constitution. In 1952, at the recommendation of the International Committee of Red Cross, the League of Red Cross, now known as International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, recognized the Ceylon Red Cross as the National Society of Ceylon at its 22nd session of Board of Governors meeting at Toronto, Canada. The freshly formed Ceylon Red Cross Society was in the forefront of delivering humanitarian assistance. An orthopedic clinic and five static first aid posts functioned at the funeral procession of late Honorable D.S. Senanayake, first Prime Minister of Sri Lanka. Blood donor recruitment services inaugurated in 1956 by us became the first initiative for a blood bank in Sri Lanka. In 1972, a new constitution passed by the government of Ceylon to change its name to Sri Lanka and as a result, Ceylon Red Cross Society was renamed as the Sri Lanka Red Cross Society. We being a member of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies has been carrying out humanitarian activities for the past 75 years with a focus on protecting lives, health and human dignity without discrimination. Today we are the largest voluntary organization with a strong volunteer base spread throughout the country through a network of 25 branches with divisions and units spreading down to the grassroots levels. Our strength is in the thousands of volunteers, members and youth members who are ready to dedicate their time, skills and effort in providing relief to those affected by disasters at various times. Our vision is to conquer vulnerability created by humanitarian emergencies and promote humanitarian values. The mission is to alleviate the suffering of the most vulnerable while adhering to the fundamental principles of humanity, impartiality, neutrality, independence, volunteer service, unity and universality. The tsunami of 26 December 2004 presented a major challenge to our society. Within minutes of the tsunami, we immediately deployed thousands of volunteers across all tsunami-affected districts, helping to rescue people, providing first aid, transporting injured, retrieving and transporting the dead, as well as providing food and non-food relief items to those affected. In response to a request made by the then Honorable Prime Minister and present President, His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksa, 
the Red Cross movement pledged to construct 35,000 houses to tsunami-affected families. All Red Cross houses are constructed to high standards with the emphasis of rebuilding communities that lost everything. We also signed MOUs with the government of Sri Lanka for hospital reconstruction. These included 21 major projects at a cost of 4,066 million rupees and 56 minor projects at a cost of 845 million rupees. At the end of the tsunami operation, the Sri Lanka Red Cross Society, with the assistance of the movement partners, has served a total of 2.2 million beneficiaries, which includes 188,000 with access to improved water and sanitation at a cost of over 4 billion rupees, 464,000 with healthcare services and infrastructure at a cost of 6 billion rupees, 89,000 with shelter and housing, 78,000 with livelihood support, and 371,000 with emergency disaster relief. In recent times, we began our quest to rebuild the lives of the most vulnerable who now are returning to the north of Sri Lanka after a 30-year-old war. As services are ongoing, we have pledged to build 5,000 houses in this region. With the dedication of our volunteers, and the overwhelming support from our partners and donors, the Sri Lanka Red Cross Society stands committed to serving the people of Sri Lanka. With the strength of the volunteer base, the organizational structure and international partner support, the society stands ready to meet and serve the most vulnerable during any future disaster. <laughs>